learning objective of this chapter is to examine the contents of the IMDG code and its supplement, leading to an understanding of their application. Note, this module is based on the IMDG Code 2008 edition, International Maritime Dangerous Goods Code, incorporating Amendment 3408 and the 2008 supplement. Where the phrase, the code is used in this module, it refers to this code. The IMDG Code is an international agreement for the transport of dangerous goods by sea. It is published by the IMO. Many sections of the code apply more to those who work ashore in documenting, packaging and handling dangerous goods, or in the manufacture of packaging. The ship's senior officers and shoreside management staff will also need to know about and use the code a lot more than you will be required to do. In most situations, you will be following instructions for loading or discharging your ship, and all of the planning and documentation will have been done by the officers and shore staff. However, a basic knowledge of the contents and provisions of all areas of the code will ensure that all seafarers are better able to perform their own duties. It is also important to point out that the majority of problems with dangerous cargo consignments are not the fault of the ship's personnel in any way. Problem shipments are frequently intercepted at the point of loading by vigilant staff, and a good reporting procedure between crew and the responsible officers is essential. Make sure you follow this instruction. If you see something you are not sure about, report it. The IMDG code comprises two volumes and a supplement as shown. Click on the three covers to view the respective tables of contents. Volume 1 contains the following. Volume 2 contains the following. The supplement contains the following. The supplement contains the following. The most used part of the code is the dangerous goods list, found in Chapter 3.2 in Volume 2. You will not normally be required to work with this list. The ship's senior officers and the shore team will handle the necessary paperwork, often on computer, but this chapter will help you understand what is involved. Dangerous goods are listed here in numerical order, according to their unique four-digit United Nations numbers. If you only have the name of the substance, Start by looking up the UN number in the index at the back of Volume 2, and then enter the list. The Dangerous Goods list is divided into 18 columns, which contain references to additional instructions elsewhere in the code. This is the unique identifying number assigned to a dangerous substance, material or article. This shows the official or proper shipping name of a dangerous substance, material or article to be used in any documentation relating to transportation. Substances are divided into groups according to their type, and these are called classes. Some are further categorized into divisions. This column indicates the class of the substance, material or article. This column indicates if there are any additional risks associated with the substance, and also identifies those dangerous goods considered to be marine pollutants or severe marine pollutants using the symbol 
P. For packing purposes, substances or articles of certain groups have been divided into three categories, or packaging groups, according to the degree of danger they present. High danger, group 1, medium danger, group 2, and low danger, group 3. This column contains a number, referring to any special provisions relevant to the substance or article. Different rules apply to the transport of dangerous goods of certain classes when there is only a limited quantity. The maximum quantity per inner packing under which the provisions of this chapter apply is indicated in column 7A. For small quantities of certain classes, the shipments may even be exempt from the majority of requirements, and, if applicable, these quantities are shown by way of an alphanumeric code in column 7B. This column contains a letter number code, which refers to a detailed list of instructions concerning the use of packagings. This column contains a similar letter number code, which refers to certain special packing provisions. This column shows codes that refer to instructions concerning the use of intermediate bulk containers. This column contains codes which refer to special packing provisions applicable to IBCs. This column is now reserved for data in a future revision of the code. The data which it contained up until now is no longer valid. This column applies to more modern portable tanks and road tank vehicles. This column contains codes referring to special provisions for the transport of dangerous goods in portable tanks and road tank vehicles. The entries in this column refer to the relevant emergency instructions for fire and spillage, which are found in the EMS Guide Emergency Response Procedures for Ships Carrying Dangerous Goods in the supplement. This column shows requirements for the stowage and segregation of the different packages. This column contains further special information on the chemical properties of dangerous goods listed. This is simply a repeat of the unique identifying number, as also shown in column 1 to assist in tracing information across the two adjacent pages. Some substances, materials or articles are not mentioned specifically by name in the dangerous goods list. These are referred to as generic or not otherwise specified cargoes and are listed in Appendix A to the code.
The index found at the back of Volume 2 contains an alphabetical listing of all commonly shipped substances, materials, and articles. In this index, if the word C appears after the name in the substance, material, or article column, this indicates the entry as a synonym, and reference must be made to the entry in the dangerous goods list against the UN number and proper shipping name shown. Three columns appear alongside the names, indicating marine pollutants, class, and UN number, for ready reference to the most commonly required items.